Hello there, everybody. Thanks for checking into my little video here. I hope you're doing well. We're going to talk about factoring quadratics with something I'm calling the brute force monkey face method. All right, so we're going to factor standard form quadratic trinomials where A does not equal 1. Those are the tricky ones, right? Okay, so... Uh, Something that I want to uh, explain first, what the what this name means. Brute force is a phrase that sometimes means just go straight to the solution. No tricks, no shortcuts, no special little jib-jab routines. You just hammer away at it until you get the answer. All right? That's the brute force part. Uh, the monkey face part, however, well, that kind of comes about by the way uh, the parentheses kind of diagram out. And it sort of looks like a monkey face, don't you think? And anyway, brute force monkey face just sounds better than brute force. So that's why I'm calling it that. Okay, um, before I actually give you an example here, I just want to make a comment here that this method depends entirely on your thorough understanding of the process of multiplying binomials. In fact, this process strengthens the understanding of multiplying binomials, but you have to know how it works pretty well before you can even kind of do this process, okay? But they, they work together. Uh, doing this type of factorization actually helps with multiplying binomials. Um, it strengthens everything around it, okay? Uh, let me show you what I mean, just to, just to kind of uh, get a little specific here. If we took 2x plus 3 times x minus 5, and you wanted to multiply those two binomials together, all right, um, probably the first thing you would do, at least the first thing I do, is multiply the first terms together. Okay, so that's 2x squared, and then maybe the next thing, or at least one of the next things, would be 2x times negative 5, that's negative 10x, and 3 times x might be the next thing you do, that's 3x, and finally 3 times negative 5, which gives you negative 15. But you're not done yet, of course. You have to combine those middle terms together. In this case, we get negative 7x from doing that. And finally, we're ready to show our answer, 2x squared minus 7x minus 15. And so just wanted to reiterate that that process that we did to come up with negative 7x came about by adding two products. The outer product gave us the negative 10x, and the inner product gave us 3 times x negative 10x plus 3x is negative 7x. That's how we got our middle term of our answer, okay? That middle term is super important, as you know. And uh, so that's going to be sort of our key for the brute force monkey face method um, in how we do it and understanding how we got it in the first place because we're just going to reverse that process. Uh, sometimes people do just call this method the reverse foil method, but geez, how boring is that? Anyway, let's try something else. Let's try an example. Let's say 2x squared minus 7x minus 30. All right, so uh, I'm going to set up a couple of uh, by no, uh, parentheses there, um, assuming that it can be factored. Isn't that optimistic and hopeful? Uh, let's see, I would multiply, if I was multiplying, I would have... Um, multiplied the first terms together to give me the 2x squared, and I would multiply the last terms together to give me negative 30, and then, as we've said, the inner product plus the outer product is how we're going to get our negative 7x. And, um, yeah, there's their monkey face. Okay. So, how would we get 2x squared? Well, that's fortunate, because there's really only one way to get 2x squared as a product, and that's 2x times x. Um, so, okay, well, that's good. Now, negative 30, however, uh, has a couple of different uh, ways that we could get negative 30. Um, I'm just going to pick one, like 3 times 10. Now, it's negative 30 there in our uh, trinomial, so one of those numbers has to be negative. Well, we'll keep that in mind, but I'm not going to try to figure it out just yet. So, um, if I multiply the 3 times x, our inner product there, that's 3x, and the outer product will be 2x times 10, or 20x. Can I get negative 7x from 3x and 20x? No, I cannot. So I uh, have to discard those two. I'm going to try something else. How about uh, 6 times 5? That makes 30. Let's try that. Um, that gives me an inner product of 6x and an outer product of 10x. How about that? 6x and 10x. One of them's negative, remember. Still, we're not going to get negative 7x from that. Okay, that's fine. No problem. Just try something else. In fact, why don't we just try switching those numbers around? Uh, that gives me 5x in the middle and 12x, 12x from the outer ones. 
5 and 12 don't make wait a minute one remember one of them is negative if that was a negative 12 then it works and that means that the 6 has to be a negative because that's what how i would get the uh negative 12 2x times negative 6 and which means that it's plus 5 and ta da we're done brute force monkey face Okay, um, let's try another example. Actually, but first, I have something that I would like to say to you. A little musical plea. <clears throat> okay. Hello, my name is Guess and Check. Please be my friend. Okay, that's it. That's the whole song. I, I won't torture you with anything else. But I want to make the point here, everybody, that Guess and Check is a good thing. It's a strengthening thing. It's how you, it's a very valuable uh, mental math skill. Um, it's not random. It can be tedious. It can be boring. But you know what? Sometimes life it has some of these hard moments and you just have to go through it. You get stronger. This is a very, very good thing. I hope that if you're a teacher, you emphasize the positive aspects of this process because students really do learn a lot by guessing and checking. You get good at guessing and checking, and that's a good skill. Being able to guess well is a valuable skill. All right, let's try another example. Uh, and we'll try this time 6x squared plus 17x minus 10. Again, that last product there is negative, okay? So we got a couple things to keep in mind there. Let's set up our parentheses and let's just jump in with 3x times 2x. That makes 6x squared. Okay, let's just give it a try. If we need to, we can change it later. And negative 10. Um, how about 2 and 5? Okay, well, that'll give me an inner product of 4x and an outer product of 15x. 4x and 15x. Nope, there's no way I'm going to get 17x from those two numbers. Okay, no big deal. That was just our first guess. Let's try something else. You know what? Let's just flip those numbers around. It worked last time. Um, so that gives me an inner product of 10 and an outer product of 6, 10 and 6. Remember, one of them is negative, but there's still no way I'm going to get positive 17x out of that. Okay, well, let's see. We've tried 5 and 2, and none of those worked. Well, there's really only one other pair of numbers uh, that multiply to 10, and so that's 10 and 1. So let's think about it. Where should we put the 10? Should we put it multiplying the 2 or multiplying the 30? Remember, we're trying to get the positive 17. Well, I think you can probably guess right along with me there that it's going to make more sense to try it at least with the 2. That'll be 10 and 1 there. That's an inner product of 20 and an outer product of 3. Remember, one of them's negative. Which one has to be negative? It's the 3. So that means it's 2x minus 1 over there and 3x plus 10. Ta-da! Brute force monkey face. Thanks for watching.